Hola, como estas, family? Hello. Ça va bien? Hello, how you doing? Let me get my light together. Okay. So, happy Thursday, first off. Happy Friday Eve to the family. <laughs> um, and I hope you guys are ready for the weekend. I am going to say that... Uh, I'm going to start off by saying I hope y'all are being safe out there because this weather out here looks like it's about to be a problem. I don't know what's going on, but it's crazy. Kez FX. Thanks for joining, love. I appreciate you coming through, family. Um, so, uh, for those who don't know me, of course, I am Queen Mercy, your badass brand coach, and I help to build profitable, scalable, six-figure, black-owned businesses using mindfulness, achieve through meditation, uh, marketing, advertising, and automation. So uh, you can learn more about that at badassmybrand.com. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. This is going to be a recap show and we're going to jump into some additional stuff just so that um, you guys can have a plan for things that you can be doing right now to help build your community and create um, generational wealth for your family and, and do things uh, create the lifestyle that you dream of, the life that you are building by design, by your specific tailored design, okay? So a dynamic life is what everybody wants. So not just all work, no play, um, or living this American dream, which is the rat race, right? Working for somebody for the rest of your life, retiring at an old age, when you're kind of too old to really enjoy it like you want to, and then you die, right? Life is, you're born, you're educated, you go to work, you pay bills, you die. That's not the life that we want. So, what I aim to do and that um, your feedback has given me, what I feel that I've been doing in these Black Brand Weekly series is providing you with tips, tools, and tricks and resources to get your businesses to the next level, get your brands to the next level, or even if you don't have a brand or business in mind, but just putting your mindset on that right track because um, economic prowess and economic fulfillment, economic fulfillment is only going to come from entrepreneurship. It's typically not going to come from working for, for someone else unless that particular company shares your value. So that could be working for a black owned company. Um, and we need black owned companies that are sustainable and scalable enough to employ our employees, employ our own people so that we can create those micro economies that we so dream of having. Okay. So over the past few months, um, it's been crazy. So April was all about business branding. April is Small Business Month. So we really took a deep dive into um, business branding, um, everything from brand basics all the way up to brand partnerships and collaborations, how to build and scale your brand. So we will talk more about that in, fut in the future, but there are, are topics that are, so, um, that are so imperative and so, you know, just prominent and just at the forefront of our communities that Building a brand is only the portion, only a small portion of economic feasibility and sustainability for us. Uh, to really realize uh, sovereignty and self-actualization and self-realization, you have to come away from working for other people. So yes, employment uh, or entrepreneurship is a huge portion of uh, freedom, living a free life. But there are other things that need to change before you're ready for entrepreneurship. Um, and so. What I've been doing over those past these past few months is getting you guys mentally prepared for that shift. And I'm hoping that it's working based on your feedback. It's working. So I'm going to continue doing exactly that. And we will have more branding talk in the future with um, some great branding experts. And to, you know, they will add on to the things that I've given you already. And we'll just cultivate a, a creator's network to make sure that we're scaling your brands to the next level. All right. So. In May, we talked about mindfulness and money, two of my favorite topics, because mindfulness is how you really prepare your mind and you get in touch with your true self and you learn what your passions are um, and you really, your life just seems to flow when you can start to, when you're aware of, open to, receptive of, and kind of self-managed by your mind, right? Right? Um, because your mind is so deep, it's so complex, it's so dynamic, 
it was created with all of these different um, corners and pieces and spaces that we haven't even tapped into. You have knowledge from your ancestors, from our collective ancestors. There's so much in, in this big, beautiful brain that we all encompass that the only way studies have shown, science has shown, research has shown, life examples have shown, that the only way to tap into that brain is to utilize mindfulness and to get to achieve mindfulness, uh, meditation is one of the best ways of doing that. Um, so yes, absolutely. Yoga, meditation. Yoga is physical meditation. Um, and meditate, meditating, or I'm sorry, yoga is physical mindness, like uh, mindfulness, your awareness of the space that you're in. But uh, meditation is the mental mindfulness. So make sure that you are, you know, utilizing both your body and your mind to grow. June. Self-planning and support. So we talked a lot about um, buying black, uh, creating black micro economies. I'm so excited for August. So what I'm feeling is that um, I'm going to take July off. July is my birthday month. I'm a Leo. Um, and what we'll do is I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to host a, a health um, challenge. And y'all, this weather is looking crazy. My trees are like going crazy. I think I'm going to host a health challenge, but I really want to focus on my mental well-being and um, just launching this course finally. <laughs> so that's going to be my focus for July um, and getting my health together, getting my voice and throat together so I can be 100%. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm going to come back in August and I already have some people scheduled for you. I'm so excited. We're going to continue to talk about building micro economies. Um, and I'm going to go into, I have uh, a woman who's raised three beautiful entrepreneurial little boys um, and she's homeschooled her children. She's going to talk to us. She has a podcast and she's going to talk to us about raising young entrepreneurs. Um, my brother is uh, already agreed to come to uh, talk to us about uh, micro economies uh, and so let's just break down micro economies real quick right because there's the self in order to have an economy right you need a few different things in economics you need some education you need the acro you need the actual economic portion the financial feasibility your own money and your own um, barter systems your own businesses to support each other um, supply chains etc partnerships networks communities all of that good stuff um, so we're going to talk about the ways to build these different levels. And since each level is so complex, we're probably going to dive into each level interdependently. Um, and so first I want to talk about self-education because that's one of the most prolific, prolific ways of changing your lifestyle. Education is power. And if you don't believe that, then I feel really bad for you. If you don't know where you come from, who your people are and you don't know your history and you haven't studied history outside of the U.S. school education or wherever you get your general education or got your general education, then you are missing out on so many bits and pieces about your own culture and history that are never, ever, ever, ever taught to you, um, especially if you live in America. Because America does, uh, white America does everything that it can to suppress black America's self-actualization, self-realization, self-support, self-knowledge and awareness, um, inter-community relations, black and black relations, um, black relationships, black love. I mean, they don't want to see us get together. They don't want to see us be a community. They don't want to. That's why there's all this allyship right now, right? All this allyship is us, them saying, okay, we're sorry. We, we didn't mean to do all these bad things. We did do all these reprehensible things. And now we're sorry because we don't want you niggas to get together and start collaborating and doing what you need to do to build your own micro economies. We want you to still feed off of our dollar, feed off of our business, let us sign your paychecks, let us keep you enslaved with our money and with our control so that we can continue to control your mind and, and completely fuck your mind and whatever. I hope the kids are not watching this, but sometimes you got to get graphic. America is a mental 
F-U-C-K. America is a complete mindfuck if you are a person of color. And if you don't understand that and you don't know your history and you're not thinking about creating your own microeconomies and creating economies within the black community, then it's time to switch over to the next to the next level of progression and elevation. Elevate, elevate your mind. <laughs> As Chris Tucker would say, <laughs> elevate your mind, okay? I'm going to get you high today. Let Let's, we ain't even gonna talk about cannabis. Cannabis is definitely a mind elevator, okay? Definitely a mental elevator. And if you believe in the propaganda of cannabis, then you need to do your research and use discernment and have your own brain and tune away from America's propaganda of um, what they have classified to be a Schedule One drug just because it was a, a, a drug brought into this country for brown pe by brown people and black people and white people started cohabitating, you know, during the hippies movement of the 70s. They couldn't have all this, okay? So educate yourself. Learn about cannabis. Elevate your mind, okay? <laughs> um, let's talk about some action steps that you can take right now. I'm going to be on break for four weeks at least, okay? July is like my, that's my month. So I'm taking some time to just do me. Um, and so I'm going to be gone for at least four weeks. And what I really want for you guys is to have actionable steps that you can take every single day to create the life that you dream of, okay? So these are the for real, for real action steps that you need to take right now to change your life and the lives of those around you. So my best advice is meditate, elevate spiritually, and experience manifestation, okay? When you're meditating, this is how you manifest. When you're meditating, you set your mind around the idea of your dream. Don't just think it. I'm manifesting right now, okay? Don't just think it. See it, taste it, feel it, believe it. So when I dream of something and I've had a dream about something, I don't just say I'm going to do it. I don't speak passively. I speak actively. I say, oh my God, when we have that house in the islands and we are ready to retire at 30 and we got 10 million sitting in the bank, plus we got an additional 10,000 coming in every month or a million coming in every month or 100,000, whatever your amount is, whatever that amount is for you. And it's okay to aspire to have money. Like, you can't help people when you're broke, or you can. You can help more people when you have money. It is okay. That is that is why I have May mindfulness and money together. It is okay to be spiritually connected to your life and to have an abundant, affluent life. Whatever God you serve, trust me, he doesn't want you struggling. He don't want you to stress. He doesn't stress is a negative emotion. It, is, it does damage to your cortisol levels. It does damage to your physical health. It can bring about viruses in your system. It makes your immune system weaker. Stress is not good. There is no God that you could possibly pray to who really wants you to be struggling if that's your true savior. Okay, so no matter what you believe in, no matter whether it's Buddha, Christ, Muhammad, that you are a chosen person and you follow the you know Torah, whatever it is that you believe in, None of those people want you to struggle. No prophet, no leader, no ruler of your conscience, your spiritual conscience in your life, no creator um, wants you to be struggling. So affluence is definitely part of your plan. And it should be part of your plan. And you should be dreaming of it. Because when you're dreaming of it and you're manifesting it. So manifest our dreams on steroids. Manifest our dreams brought to reality. That's your imagination working. And we all have imaginations. But sometimes life is so hard that we forget to utilize our imaginations. So manifestation is just your dreams plus your imagination visualizing it. And it's like a your mind becomes like a projection screen and you are seeing and living your dream in your mind actively, okay? It's like a movie playing out in your mind. Make your dreams into movies in your mind. That is how you manifest them into creation, okay? So when you're manifesting, it's like a vision of 
It's like a, a real film going across your mind, okay? It's every dream that you've had summarized into one, and it is your brain on fire saying, okay, this is what I envision. This is what I dream. This is what I taste, feel, smell, hear. This is what's coming for me. It is happening right now because I can see it, okay? That's manifestation. It is literally that. It is a vision board. It is a digital vision board. I have two vision boards, a digital one and a printed one. You know, it is whatever method that works for you, okay? Um, meditate daily. Ele that will elevate your spiritual conscience. Experience manifestation. It is an experience. It is a delightful experience. And it's absolutely world-changing when you can envision your dreams in that way, okay? Invest. Saving sucks. Savings, you barely get a return. Uh -huh. You got to have a few tens of thousands in the bank to see any type of, um, you know, ones on the dollar side of when it comes to savings because of uh, interest rates, the APY on those accounts are so low. Um, grow your money with investments. Investing is the single best thing that you can do with your money right now, okay? No matter whether it's investing in something that's publicly traded or investing and taking five or ten thousand dollars and investing it in a black owned startup. Okay, you can be a micro investor, you don't have to have fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, five million plus to invest in a startup. You can invest. There are companies and businesses out here, people in your own neighborhood, in your own backyard, in your own family who need five thousand dollars in startup capital to start a food truck, right? $5,000 can go real, a really long way for somebody who's just renting a space or leasing a pop-up space or doing a food truck business or creating a digital business. $5,000 is a lot that it's, you know, don't get caught or $500 even could be a lot. So don't get caught up in numbers. Just invest your money and in a way that allows you to uh, experience some type of return on the investment, some type of ROI. Um, exercise and farm your own veggies. So right now, um, this is really huge. And all of my neighbors have all these big, glorious farms. <laughs> and I don't have a green thumb at all, but my husband and I, we be out there, okay? Um, and so we have a few different things growing because when you can take away the question of how your vegetables and how your food was raised and farmed, then you can take away the cancer and you can take away the question of, you know, um, uh, you know, adverse reactions for things like, um, what's the salmonella poisoning and food poisoning and whether it's organic or not and what kind of pesticides are on it and, you know, just anything. You can take away all the question by, you can't, I mean, you can raise chickens in your own farm, especially if you have a, la a large property, but um, if you don't have the space to uh, farm meat or animals for food consumption, um, then you harvest your own vegetables and eat a vegan diet a few days a week, right? And that would do immense, like, benefits, offer immense benefits for your health. So exercise daily, even if you're just getting out and getting a walk in, Get some vitamin D, get some sun, get your body to moving, let your body move, experience the world, experience earth and everything that God created. Um, and also farm your own veggies, like really take the questionability out of your health and what you're eating. Um, educate yourself. Step outside of the education that you are used to. Um, find a black company to take on, uh, follow their podcasts or any company, any company, um, like one of my favorites is Mind Valley. Uh, so Mind Valley is a company that is all about manifestation and, and, and mindfulness when it comes to transposing the two uh, mindfulness and money cultivation and things like that into your business and into your if you're an employee or if you're an entrepreneur. So how to incorporate that into the business world. So I love Mind Valley. That's one of the podcasts that I follow. Um, I also am, we learned French, my husband and I, um, we went to France in 2019. So the six months leading up to that. And since then, um, we have been learning, uh, un peu français, uh, just a little bit of French, uh, as we, uh, have been growing and it's just, 
it's life changing. You know, we can go to Canada, Africa, Europe, you know, French is probably, I think it's what like the third or sixth most widely spoken language in the world. So you can go a lot of places with it. So um, we love that. And we can, we've learned phrases and things that we can speak in our own language when we want to, you know, we can just not necessarily have uh, dumb Americans because Americans are lazy. We're the only country who really don't, we don't necessarily pertain to speaking a second, second language. And I'm not talking about Spanish. Let's just clarify something. Spanish is only going to be beneficial to you if you are staying in America and you really want to pertain to the Spanish community. I mean, other than that, when the hell else are you going to use Spanish? You know, like, I like English. Okay, this is still America, so English is still the main uh, language. So there is no way, shape, or form in which English is not going to be used in America, okay? So just keep that in mind. English is fine in America, but outside of America, what's widely spoken? Where will you want to live? Think, think long term. Where will you like to retire to when you um, decide that you want to leave the American soil, <laughs> you know, or you get fed up with America, or you just want to take an extended vacation, or you just want to go on any vacation. What language will help you or benefit you or serve you in that, in that manner? So if Spanish is that, then that's great, you know, okay, whatever, Spanish, woo. But if you want to be globally competitive, I mean, you could learn French, which is a language that's also from our ancestors, too. Or you could have, um, you know, you can speak Mandarin or Japanese or um, German or Russian or whatever it is that you want to speak. And just elevate yourself, right? Okay? Elevate your mind. Um, everybody needs their own language. Okay? Everybody needs their own language, their own way to communicate. And if you don't identify specifically as an American, but as black first and then American, right? Because I'm black first. I'm always going to be black. I might not always be American. That's a choice, right? Right now, that's a choice. But I'm always going to be black. So let me make sure that I have my own money, my own culture, my own community, my own everything. So that if I ever decide to really give America the two deuces, right? The two middle fingers, then I can say, okay, I can adapt because I know another language. I know how to grow my own food. I know how to create my own micro economy. I'm an entrepreneur. I can take my business anywhere or whatever. Create the life that you desire. Start being intentional about how you spend your time and what you choose to spend your time on. Turn off the news. It doesn't do anything for you. Turn off the radio. It doesn't do anything for you, okay? Cultivate your own mindset about the music that you like, the lyrics that you want to instill in your mind and your children's minds. Think about your own culture. So in here, the only rap we really play is Kendrick, J. Cole. We'll play a little uh, Big Sean and, and a little Turn Up here or there. We play some workout hip-hop stuff and rap when we are ready to turn up and like work out and get a good... A good um, uh, pump, but you know, we don't listen to new age rap because it don't have anything to do with what the lifestyle that we're living, you know, it ain't really talking about nothing. Um, so we don't listen to the radio and all that. We just nix that. It's just noise. Just It's just noise. It's nonsense. <laughs> um, so educate yourself, learn a new language, whatever. Start building something that you are passionate about, okay? Um, encourage your children and your family to do the same. So my dad and I, we have these really great talks, right? So I'm always talking to him because he's talking about retirement and he cooks so well. This man should have been a chef. So I always encourage him like, look, dad, if you ever need five or 10 grand to really start up, you know, um, your food truck business or whatever it is that you want to do, relocate to Jamaica and build your little farm, whatever it is that you want to do, let us know and we'll we'll back you. Like we're gonna we're gonna make sure that that's a successful ben venture. I'm gonna pull out whatever marketing and PR I, I can, any hats, any connections, etc., and do that. If your kids have an entrepreneurial spirit or they have a, a knack for anything, explore that. Don't ever deter them from doing something that you feel that they feel comes naturally to them because these kids are so smart. You should really be encouraging them. Um, even if it's outside of a sport, especially if it's outside of a sport, you know, um, really allow them to use their heart and soul and their mind to develop whatever passion it is that they have, no matter what that passion is. Really encourage your kids to be better than you and better than us and just to be great because that's what's in them is greatness. Greatness is in their genes. It's in their genetics. So it doesn't matter if it's knitting or 
cutting hair, growing or cooking or growing small batch wine or beer. If you want to be a, you know, micro distillery or micro winery, um, cultivating a home or community farm or garden, doing tutorial or funny videos, whatever. Find your happy, happy place and learn to serve others. And it will always, your passion will always serve you back. Okay. All right. So. Last but not least, this is going to be a quick one, y'all. I'm super excited because my voice has just been so crazy and I'm super excited to get this taken care of, take care of myself this month, um, and hopefully come, come back to y'all with, you know, good news and, and great things that we've been doing over the summer. Um, so steps to take right now to grow and strengthen your community, not just your inner circle of fans, uh, family, friends. Um, but your whole out, your whole external circle, your neighbors, your community, um, your digital community, people in your life, etc. So, this is how you build the community that you've always dreamed of. That black ass, lit as fuck community. The grandma who's still checking on each other. Uh, little so and so, if you ain't home by five o'clock, I'm gonna tell your mama I saw you coming down the street with this little boy, right? That's that's the community that we used to have. This is how we get back to building that, okay? Buy black. Number one, buy black. Support your minority-owned business, your local, um, you know, I say minority because, like, my family is Afro, uh, my husband's family is Afro-Latino. Uh, my my family is black and Asian and, and Native American. And we, uh, my husband's family is Native American, too. We kind of have everything all mixed up, so I, I don't want our non-black counterparts and allies that feel like we don't support them but if you don't rock with us then we don't support you and there's a large portion of each of those communities that don't support us so there's a large portion of our own community that don't support us and if you a sambo type black person if you're a crab in the barrel i don't rock with you point blank period i don't care what you look like but until your mentality changes we don't rock together. I don't care what you look like, who you are, where you're from. I really don't care about you, right? If you don't care about us, I don't care about you. So that is, is to say, I say all that to say we're inclusive as long as we're included. As long as we are all in this shit together, then we can be inclusive. But anytime it steps out of line and you just not rocking with us or you ain't hashtagging Black Lives Matter and you ain't caring about black, black men and, and women and children being murdered in the streets or whatever... We don't rock. We don't rock together. Um, we don't share the same values. So, all good there. Let's be clear on how who we're supporting and where we're spending our money, okay? So, educate your family and community. This is such a creative thing to do. You can do, like, uh, plan small, private little events, like a potluck event or like a dinner, like a weekly or monthly dinner event where... Your black neighbors get together and y'all encourage each other to share a dish from your community or from your culture or from your, your you know, just your, your one of your favorites. Um, and y'all could, everybody could bring something to the table that is culturally relevant or a piece of history that we feel like everybody could benefit from. And y'all can each just share, take a moment to share the, the dish, share the, the historical event or happening or the piece of history, the piece of culture, and really um, build a sense of community and really get your neighbors together. So like our neighbors, we do um, we do a Kwanzaa dinner every year, um, our black neighbors. <laughs> we uh, share gardening tips and we share, um, we share food from each other's gardens and just all different kinds of things. We share resources on Facebook. We share books, etc. So you can do a book club, whatever. Um, and that actually directly lends into the leads into the next point, which is to speak to and support one another. Okay, when you see a black person on the street, you speak to them, right? You nod. You speak to them. You ask how their day is going. You have a conversation. When you see a person who looks like you and they speak the same language as you or they're from the same neighborhood or y'all are walking in the same path, just compliment each other because America is hard on people of color. So make sure that you are elevating other people who look like you just by speaking to them, lending a smile, lending a hand. If you see an elderly person crossing the street, help them out, make sure they get across safely, help them with their groceries. Look, if I don't have anything planned and I see an old person waiting on a ride, I'll offer them a ride. Like just do what you can to help elevate your community. 
speak to and support one each one and uh, one another in a very intentional way, right? So start a meetup, start a, a text of you know what's that? Um, we have um, WhatsApp, Telegram, all different types of ways. Start a text meetup group, uh, or uh, sorry, start a text accountability group or a support group, something responsible black men, um, single moms or dads, uh, investing groups, uh, startup support groups, accountability groups, book clubs, um, a children's, like say your children are, are really good at crafts, start a children's arts and crafts group, right? Like you never know how these things can turn and snowball into a business for your child or a business for you. It could completely, you could completely change your own life by su supporting and serving others. And that could lend you the freedom and flexibility to step away from your job. Say if you have a, a black parent um, home school or home education group, right? And that gets so big that parents are paying you weekly, right? Weekly or monthly to take care of their children while they're at work and educate their children. And then you have a, a minority black owned stay at home school system. You have a homeschool system for your community, teaching your children what you want them to know, right? And making sure that you're within state guidelines for, you know, reading and mathematics and science and all that good stuff. But that's a business in itself. People pay hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes per year and over the range of a child's, you know, um, 13 first years of education leading up to post-secondary education. It's huge. You can get together with a group of other educators to create a system where you're educating children in your community and you can take those children out of public school with vaccinations and, and, and sick, you know, illnesses and diseases and racist teachers and school resource officers and cops showing up and slamming kids and all kinds of stuff. All of that is dead, done, null and void. And guess what? If during that school, you also teach children how to be self-sustainable and learn a craft or a hobby and learn how to garden their, uh, farm their own garden, tend to their own garden, you're doing, it's two services in one, right? You're killing two birds with one stone. So um, be creative, right? Start a sewing club or a neighborhood green thumbs or a teen uh teen program or something like let your children get creative help them help them to realize the success of their business uh spend some time with your kids learn who they are what they want what they want to be you know what's going on in their lives because these kids have so much stress right now so much stress right now okay so um those are the things that i wanted to share um, I feel like this is a super quick one, but that's the way that I wanted this to be just tidbits of resources, tips, tools, tricks that can help you to elevate to the next level. So if you missed any portion of this live, go back. I talked about the things that you can expect from Black Brand Weekly when we return in August. Um, inshallah, you know, God willing, we'll be back in August. Um, Action steps to create the life that you want, lasting change in your life, create your life built by design, and steps that you can take right now to grow and strengthen your community. So if you miss any part of this, go to facebook.com slash badass.brand.coach2 and check out the replay of this video. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys um, in August. And July, I'm going to take all of July, my birthday month off. I'm going to be a complete Leo. I am going to be both lazy and badass at the same time, getting stuff done on my time. I'm going to go get a massage. We are going to take a mini trip to uh, see some family in a couple other states. And I'm just going to be a free bird. I'm just going to go be free and I'm going to meditate for an hour or two a day and get my life together. So um, I'm super excited. I've got some potential health challenges that I've got to take care of. 
and really make sure that I'm 100% when I come back for me for you guys. So yeah, we just we about to have a good time in July. Y'all gonna see me. I might pop up on a live or two and just do some random stuff. Um, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I need your, your healing hands, your prayers. Um, my brother, AK Avexia, I do Christian, um, is is blessing me happy healing here on IG. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to take July off. And um, inshallah, God willing, we will be back with Black Brand Weekly in August. So I look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks. And I'll be finishing up my my course and launching my course. Um, and I might make it on July 28th, which is my birthday, <laughs> just to be completely badass about it. Or let me do it the Monday before my birthday so I can see um, see you guys on Tuesday and, and start to really launch that course. I just, yeah, I'm super excited about all of this. So you guys enjoy your Friday Eve. Enjoy Thursday night. Um, I'm about to go medicate and get lifted with my husband and grow to another dimension and have some dinner and enjoy the rest of my tea and meet with uh, my beautiful uh, team of business partners and co-founders, um, these black beautiful brains that are getting together to create some amazing change in this community and beyond. Y'all, I can't even touch on all of the things that we have going on. I'm super excited about it. And I will see you guys in a few weeks. Thank you for coming through. I love you guys and have a good night.